Wish you all a good day. May Lord be with you. I'm mean, indeed happy to meet you all through this media. Today, let's meditate upon the theme Saint Joseph, the pattern of the Universal Church. Pope Leo the Thirteenth would say, "The head of the Holy Family on this earth today guides and protects us from heaven." The term pattern comes from the Latin term. Father, which means father. Saint Joseph is father of the universal church. Thus, he became father of you and me. It's interesting to know the story behind the decree, how it came about. How many of us know about Father Jean Joseph, a Dominican priest, was there behind this decree being announced? Father Jean Joseph, before entering the seminary, always thought that his vocation was to marry, and he was preparing himself for marriage. There was engagement. Then there was no peace within. He thought maybe something is wrong. Maybe my vocation is something else. It's not marriage. Is not meant for me. Then he went and spoke with the girl, and then he joined the seminary. He became a priest. His love for Mother Mary and Saint Joseph became deepening and deepening and deepening. The other side we find Pius the Ninth, Pope Pius the Ninth, was working on the dogma of Mary Immaculate Conception. And then uh, the process was going on. Meanwhile, he receives a lot of letters from priests and bishops requesting to make a decree on Saint Joseph as the patron of the Universal Church. He was in dilemma. He said, "Let let me concentrate on on this as the dogma of Mother Mary." And then, uh, December eighth, eighteen fifty four, the dogma on Mother Mary was released. Still, the letters did not stop. Uh, the request and recommendation from various people keep coming to make Joseph as the patron of the Universal Church. Still, Pius the Ninth was not convinced until and unless he received the letter from Father G. Joseph, which mentioned, "I have offered, I have made a promise to God, saying that I will offer my life as a sacrifice to entrust the Church to the patronage of Saint Joseph." And this was a shocking. Lines for a pious to read. He thought, "Is God Himself is speaking to me through this priest? I need to do something about it." Here is a person who is ready to sacrifice his life for this purpose, which means there is a message for us. Then he worked on it, and then meanwhile, Father Jean Joseph was doing a lot of mortifications to make this happen. In 1869, Father Jean Joseph died, and today he is a blessed. And 1870, Pope Pius the Ninth announces the decree that Saint Joseph as the patron of the Universal Church. It's interesting to see one thing in the decree. It says Pope compares Joseph of the Old Testament and Joseph of the New Testament. He says that Joseph of the New Testament, son of son of Jacob, God chose him, prepared him so that he would protect. Food for the people of his nations, that people will have life. Here we find God chose Saint Joseph of the New Testament to protect the food from heaven, that people will have an eternal life. Both accepted God's will. Both did exactly what God wanted, and then they just followed the way that the Lord wanted them to follow. This is very beautiful. Saint Joseph is always there for us. Pope would say, like Joseph protected Mother Mary and Jesus on earth. Today, he from heaven protects us, the mystical body of Christ that is Church. That's his duty. He is our Father. Who he was Father to Jesus is a Father for us. But then, when we look back into the Christian traditions, the first centuries people they are not ready to accept the spiritual fatherhood of Joseph. It was easy for them to accept the spiritual motherhood of Mother Mary. The reason was this: always they thought that if they call Saint Joseph as a father of Jesus, then people would misunderstand to be a biological father, or there may be a question will come arise against the virginity of Mother Mary. So they were scared of always calling. 
Joseph as the father of Jesus. But then in the 4th century we find that Bishop Augustine came to explain that what the task was given to St. Joseph. He was a father like any other father in the world to protect this child. Jesus was needed a father to love him, to educate him, to guide him, to feed him. And then that's what the role was given to St. Joseph. It's nothing to do with the biological aspect. Then people are a little relaxed and started focusing on St. Joseph. However, there comes a two questions always in our mind. Why Jesus himself did not talk about St. Joseph? Why well, at all we should give more importance? The answer is simple. Jesus was concentrating on Heavenly Father. He was explaining to his disciples, to the people whom he met, like the love of the Heavenly Father, the forgiveness of Heavenly Father. He is there to accept us as we are and so on and so on. He doesn't want to confuse with his earthly father. That's the reason that he didn't focus on St. Joseph. But then his actions, his life, his way of speaking, his manliness, everything, everything that he learned from St. Joseph has been revealed through his life. Second question, if heavenly father is Jesus' father, why at all he need an earthly father? As Jesus had a human nature and divine nature, his divine nature did not require any help from St. Joseph. But his human nature, certainly being born as a boy, being born as a human being in this world, needed of a father to take care of him, to protect him, to guide him, and then to show him the way. And certainly he needed that. That's what Bishop Fulton Sheen would say. Eh? Jesus being a boy certainly need of a father because a boy learns everything from a father. So God knows that there should be a father. And God wanted to entrust his task to him to say, he sent him only his son to this earth. Now his son is a, a human being here on earth. A heavenly father cannot embrace him, cannot guide him, be with him, walk with him. So he entrusted the task to St. Joseph that Joseph was with him to carry wherever he goes, to protect him, to show him the way. And you and me, when we are baptized, we become brother of Jesus, our Savior. Thus automatically, the filial relationship with Father, the Heavenly Father becomes stronger. He becomes our Father. Jesus, Heavenly Father becomes our Father. The same logic is being applied here. As St. Joseph is being uh, with Jesus and Jesus was entrusted to St. Joseph and today you and we are entrusted to the hands of St. Joseph. He is our Father. As we accept wholeheartedly Mother Mary as our mother, he is a spiritual father of all of us. By accepting him, we will be able to deepen our spirituality. We will be able to uh, live a life that is expected of us. That is very, very important. Let us catch hold of St. Joseph. He is a father to all of us as he was father to Jesus. You know, whenever we feel something is not okay, whenever we feel threatened by somebody, threatened by something, we rush to our father. Even though the mothers are known for their love, father is known for their protection. Once the father says, I am there, don't worry. When the father takes a step, we are okay with it. It's exactly the same role St. Joseph is playing from heaven to you and to me. He's there for us. In a special note, we would say, there are so many testimonies I come across that whenever you are in need of a, a financial help, we seek St. Joseph and we will get it. Because as a father, he does to the children. The financial thing is like meant for the father. But then he does certainly that to us. So whenever you are in need of money, whenever you are undergoing a, a problem of loan or whatever it may be, entrust to St. Joseph. Ask for it and you will receive it. Let's make use of St. Joseph and through his intercession, ask God's blessing that you and me be a true brother of Jesus, a son of Mother Mary and St. Joseph. Amen.